on the main stage, Optic Gaming versus Splice. Momo, before we send it down to the casters, I have to get your opinion. You're the European expert here. Can Splice do it? Do they have what it takes to shut down the Green Wall? I'm not going to look to my right because I know he's got watch your, watch your answer. But, but I think Splice have what it takes. Okay to take down Optic in pool play. They've done it before. You know, we've seen it champs in previous history. I'm just going to say, yeah, I think they got what it takes. Mad Cat and Josh looking to do it again. Mr. X, you're not looking so sure about that one? No, no, I would be shocked if Splice, look, I think Splice is a fantastic team. I would be shocked if they take down Optic Gaming here. Okay, TP, which way are you leaning on the fence? Europe or North America here? I won't be surprised if Splice maybe take this first map, but overall in the series, I'm going Green Wall for sure. Green Wall for sure? Definitely. You don't yeah. want to change your mind on that no. one? Damn it, I was trying to see. Momo wasn't too convincing. His. I mean, that was a pretty poor cool argument. I, I, was, I, I, I was trying I, to wait for you to convince extremely him. Extremely biased. I, I'm going to say, I, I mean, I think Splice have what it takes. That was the question you asked. You yeah, didn't ask fair. me who's going to win. Valid, valid, yeah, fair. valid point. Splice Such definitely do sure. have what it takes. Classic Momo, Mr. On the Fence. But that's everything from the studio. We can send it down to our wonderful casters for the final primetime match of the evening. We've got Jack and me. I'll tell you what, guys, you're having way too much fun on the desk. It is prime time, and we've got uh, one, one hell of a matchup. I mean, I know there's still the open bracket team to come, but in my opinion, this is for the group, right? I mean, yeah, right now, both of these teams sitting at 2-0. and oh. Every single player in this lineup right now in response has above a 1.0 KD. They're both looking on point, and now you've got Europe's finest going up against North America's finest in another fantastic battle of NA versus EU. All right, so I know Momo's our resident EU expert, but yeah. you were in London. All right, so... Same question. Can they take him? Yeah, I don't think so. I don't think so. This is a team that couldn't beat Orbit uh, in three different series. They win one. A 10-3 map count overall, but I know we do have a little bit of a G Fuel key player matchup to take a look at. This look. one going between Mad Cat and Skump. And I talk about the respawn hardpoint KDs. Look at that one. Wow. 1.46 for Scump, 1.43 for Mad Cat. The last splice hard point I watched, he's with something like 37 and 15. Yeah. Just destroying. It's been said historically that if you look for a player that scares North American players or one maybe the top talent in EU, Mad Cat's been on that list forever. Kids of beast. And Scump has been on the same list yeah. for North America. I can promise you that. <laughs> Let's go ahead, though, and take a look at our rig draft for this game number one. It's going to be Breakout Hardpoint. You've got Camo for Karma, Centurion for Krim, Reactive Armor for Scump, and Overdrive for Formal. On the other side, Jerd going with that FTL jump. We've seen a lot today. And the rest all the same as OG. It's game number one, Breakout Hardpoint. And for me, this scares me if I'm a Splice fan because they have a, 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 a rough history with this map in North America and in general. That's right. It was what uh, the face match. Didn't you cast I that? Cast Something like 250 to 27. 22. One of the worst performances we've seen in a hard point or the best if you're a phase fan <laughs> but you got to think usually when you get pounded like that it sticks in your mind right maybe you spend more time prepping for it spend more time getting better at that particular map and mode you got to think they come here more prepared buddy you got to think that ladies and gentlemen it is our final match of prime time here in atlanta and i know there's a crowd out there on friday night it's going to be a great weekend here. It's Optic Gaming against Splice on Breakout Hardpoint. And looking back to that key player matchup, we're kicking things off with Mad Cat. We'll see as they push top middle. Trophies out, trying to find kills and loading. One in front, shots on point. Second there as well. Able to pick him up and a nice start from Mad Cat as Jerd finds one as well. Early time going to be going to Splice. And you can see they're expecting Karma to be in this outer lane. There, Carmen does get one kill on the Bants, but now Mad Cat feeling quite confident his abilities to go ahead and challenge us. But I thought he jumped off the map. I thought he just jumped off the map. That looks like, that, you know when you get that feeling like you lose your stomach for a second? Yeah. You, you hit a hill, you look like down off of something high. Like right there, I thought he was just taking a dive off. Oh, yeah. But he manages to stay on. No points yet. Four Optic Gaming, a Mad Cat, three and up. Keeping on this outer wall run, maybe Ooh. maybe looking to push the flank in. This is big because these fights trying to get from behind. You're already thinking about flipping spawns, getting ready. I mean, I know there's 15 seconds left, but this is perfectly to find a kill and try to flip these spawns in their favor for sub block. Yeah, this is actually the exact opposite of a start that I saw from Optic Gaming in their match earlier on on this map, where this was Karma basically the last time with the help of Formal going for this back garage area. Now though, it's Mad Cat all the way behind, and Optic. I don't think they have any clue. And look at the spot. The look at the spot. Yeah, and, That's and now, Josh popping up with him. Yeah, Mad Cat's got help here. Unfortunately though, Crim6 preaming this back door. Oh. Optic <laughs> Gaming wind up predicting it. Now Mad Cat's left last alive. He should force one spawn up for Optic Gaming towards middle, but still his teammates are coming all the way from commissary. A tough spot for Splice to be in. Yeah, I mean as much as he gave oh. Josh that one spawn, they needed to do something with it, right? Because yep. now he almost ends up not 
nothing involved in the action because his team keeps spawning out, keeps spawning out, keeps spawning out. As he's just hiding, trying to give them the spawns, doesn't end up working out. They had one opportunity to take advantage of that. It doesn't go their way. And this Optic Gaming team, look at the streak they're now on combined. A 12 streak. They've started to take over the slang. Karma just loves playing these outer wall runs, but either way, they're now kicking it into gear after a slow first hard point. Will now move towards this graveyard area. Scump, the first player here, and he's going to get challenged by two from Splice. Can we talk a little bit about Scump? You know, I, I think it's fair in saying that the worst event I've seen him have in his career, at least that I have been a part of casting, was Vegas. He's yeah. frustrated. His KD was way down from what we expect from him. What have you seen different in his gameplay as of the past, well, let's say, past month or so? Uh, I think that he's way more confident, one, in his roles on this team. I think Optic Gaming's practice has fully paid off. They were underprepared, and I think Skump was probably the least prepared for that first event. In regards to how much he used to play, it's always been known that Skump grinds Call of Duty more than any other. Prior to that event, it just did not happen. And I think he realized that he needs to get that back into his current play to be able to have those good weekends. And so far, with the start, he's had a 1.46 hardpoint KD here on day one. He's definitely back in action. And we talked about the big streaks from the squad earlier. You've got Four up for Krim and Karma right now. The Scarab out trying to find some kills or at least push them back from applying pressure, able to do so. Let's go over to Karma if we can. Never mind. He just ends up dropping, so he ends on a six streak at 13 and three. And you know, if you're new to competitive Call of Duty and maybe you haven't watched this Optic Gaming side much, the scariest thing is how basically every single player on this team has the ability to go off. Oh, not only do they have the ability to go off, but they're all doing it right now. Every single player positive. One thing I do want to highlight from Splice, they're down by about 50 seconds. But their two players who were in the COD Champs Grand Finals in 2016 are right now combined for 7 and 19. That's Vance and Josh. You need more from these two yeah. as th that is just not acceptable against the likes of Optic Gaming. Vance widely considered the best player in Europe. I, I think we tend to agree with him. Zero in that conversation. Mad Cat as well. But Vance last year was just on another level, man. I know you talked about Josh. He was yeah. using the ERAD quite a bit in London. You talked about how he was destroying. What was it that was special about him just a couple weeks ago? It was entirely about his positioning. He knew exactly where to bring himself uh, to get advantageous gunfights, but I think even more than that was teams were not ready for it. He, they were really the only squad using the ERAD as the weekend went on. Other teams tried to bring it out, but no one was as prepared as Josh was with the weapon, and it showed in his gameplay. It was a reason why Splice got to that second best of five in their grand finals, falling just short. Right now, those Splice are falling back into things they down are, by about 25 are. seconds. You know, we just saw a bit of a stint there with Formal. I just want to read off some stats that we saw for him thus far. He has a 1.43 overall KD in respawns, leading his entire team. A 1.23 in search and destroy, leading his entire team. He has the most hard point defense, the most hard point time. He's having one hell of a Friday. You always just have to bring up all the good stats from Formal. You know, <laughs> he can do no wrong. Oh, aren't these facts? Uh, well, look at Bantz now. He's he going. has been. But it's an eight streak for Bantz here. He's got bombardment. Trinity Scarab to work with. Ooh. And the close gunfight going in his favor. They're bounced right back. We might see a lead change here, buddy. And guess what? Remember I talked about Josh and Bantz needing to turn up. You saw them on a combined 10 streak right there. As they get more involved, Splice take back the lead. As Optic Gaming's momentum from earlier on this one has just completely flattened on out. Can they begin to claw back into things, though, as they wrap towards this cell block's hard point? All right, well, we're getting ready for the rotation out. We'll take a look at the minimap just to see where the gunfights are going to be going down. It looks like you've got a lot of yellow in the hard point, but it was Crim6 you'll see in the kill feed picking up two big ones. Now it's going to be Jurge trying to come back in and counter the play from Crim. He's getting tagged up from both sides, ultimately will fall. Crim, that four streak ends up being massive in breaking cell block, and now they're looking to defend. Yeah, you can see formal does accidentally kill Skump there, so Optic Gaming won't have all the numbers they want, but thankfully Formal's NV4 is on point right now. He's at 15-11 again. One of the top players in this lobby in overall kills right there. Now he goes over to 16, which will put him in that top spot. Krim doing what he can to hold those spawns. It's Jerd now challenging from that outer wall run. Nice job by Splice to get the pinch. Can Karma and Skump though hold them off? It does appear so. That's huge, because you lose a couple of players, but your two guys that stay up end up holding it off. Karma, Skump getting it done. Karma, we haven't talked a lot about. He's 17 and 10, though, right now, and he's been really impressing me. He might have been their MVP in the most recent 2K. And another thing I do want to point out, too, is now Optic Gaming, they're seeing how the other teams are doing so far this weekend. And you have now just announced that FaZe Clan are 3-0 in their pool, Luminosity 3-0 in their pool, and Optic Gaming are looking to do the same. When you started Infinite Warfare, Luminosity, FaZe, and Optic 
many people regarded as their top three. Before we got to really see anything, if you made some early predictions, it was those three. And now they're looking on point here in day number yep. one. You know Optic want to match their North and, American breath. And what's interesting, the only other team that would be in that conversation, but was it due to probably Apathy getting married, not having as much time to scrim, would be Envy. And now Envy looks to be back on point. They're 2-0 they're two right now. Not to knock you, but those are probably your top four teams right now that you've seen in day one, right? That would be the top four teams coming into Infinite Warfare. And now, after their practice, they're on point here in day number one of the pools here at the CWL Atlanta Open. 183 to 116. The cell block hard point for Optic. They're just so good at holding it down. It's what's given them this lead twice now in this game. Well, Skump finds two trying to push the back, get control of Helipad, get control of Scanners. There's Karma trying to trade it out, but just can't find the kill. You see him on X-Ray, now he's going to be able to get it. Second one there in front, nice shot. Tags him up, but Mad Cat, how does he win that one? Not sure how that one works out, but guess what? Formal's there to clean up the scraps. It was, it's what worked so well for this OG team. And now Splice, this one's getting out of hand quickly. It was a tied game going into the cell block hard point. And now Optic Gaming are nearly up by 100 seconds. And look, Splice are getting desperate. They're trying to hit this outer wall run. OG are ready for it. They're recognizing that this is being four hit by Splice. So what do they do? They call everybody over. They wipe the Europeans off the map. And that might just seal the deal for Optic as they want to close out this game right here, right now on the commissary hard And, and they can do it one more. One more cycle of kills here and it should be over inside One. loading his crim he does find the kill getting pushed i believe there's just two behind there's him. three one more player to kill is going to be Jared, and that should be it. That should close it down with just over 10 seconds remaining. There's one player, the number one, it's Mad Cat, that might be oh, able to Oh, they spawned behind this. them. They, they, they got a chance to go for this yeah, now. Yeah. As there was so much pressure towards middle map from Crim6 that the spawns actually flipped. Not going to happen yet. Optic Gaming won't win as of this moment, but Woo. you've got Karma on a five streak. Oh, and he's saluting too. <laughs> God bless America. Letting you know at home, he's feeling nice. He's got a couple gunfights here at Scanners, trying to back down the loading to play his life. He's <laughs> One more point, and there it is. It's not even from yeah, <laughs> Optic Gaming, though, looking very, very strong. Yeah, they're, they're on point. Smiles from Scuff. He's been hanging out in the caster green room, and just seeing him today, he, he's been focused watching all the other matches, keeping himself involved in the action, and now he's on point. A slower start at the beginning of that map, but in the end, they loop it back together as Splice will drop that first hard point. Well, Mad Cat and crew trying to get it together, regroup, talk about what maybe went wrong. Uh, they played them very tight for the first half of that game. Well, actually, I, I often kind of got out to the early read, yep. uh, lead, right? They, they battle back and it's Splice gives them a tough matchup, but then uh, eventually when you start seeing those four or five sprees pop up over and over and over again, it becomes too much. But sneaky, uh, speaking of Optic Gaming and their slaying power, let's take a quick look at this squad. I think Optic Gaming's biggest strength is pretty obvious. So when these guys are clicking on all cylinders, I don't believe there's another team in Call of Duty that can slay with them. I think also the, the green wall. I mean, these fans, they show up in the live event environment, whether it's Anaheim or, you know, Vegas. The fans show up in a big way. I'll be honest, I was worried for this Optic Gaming team. They were not grinding a lot of Call of Duty coming into the new year, but Prior to this Atlanta event, they began to get back on the grind. They've been playing almost every single night. Scrims have been paying off. They've been beating almost every team I've seen. I mean, the outlook for the season for Optic Gaming is still very strong. I would be shocked if we see them fall out of the top three at any event. I think most people probably predict them to win most events going into Infinite Warfare. And I think at your worst, you're looking at, you know, fourth place finishes. And I think if you do finish there, you're looking at potentially maybe making some changes. I was worried maybe they would be in the top six, maybe top four, but now I'm confident that this Optic Gaming team is back in form for Atlanta. Well, you know, Matt made an interesting point, Matt. I'm curious of your opinion. So, typically in the past, let's say that Optic had struggled at a COD Champs. You know, they play seventh. It's been a, it's a tough little stretch for them. They would have a tournament pretty much the next month to kind of bounce back, right? They didn't have this. It was since, now that's at the end of the year, so it's been six months really since we've seen a tournament win. So, do you think if they if they were to have a poor result here and have a poor result at ESWC? 
Because there's some pressure on them to get it done. Otherwise, maybe there would be a change. Yeah, I mean, there's more weight on their shoulders as ever, than ever before for this Optic Gaming team. Six months since their last major championship win. Obviously, two back-to-back -back seventh place finishes at Call of Duty Championships. And now with everything announced today, You've got to wonder, if this formula doesn't work, is it time for a change? I think the same answer always comes into play. Who do you even get yeah, right. <laughs> if, you're, if it's not one of these guys on this team? Here's a look, though, at Splice. They're now down 1-0 in this series. They're going into Search and Destroy next, though. This one will be on Retaliation to see if they can uh, go ahead and tie this one up going into Uplink. Yeah, we'll see if they can bounce it back. But, you know, you, you feel like uh, you never want to poke the bear, right? And it seems like, I don't know, maybe Optic a little bit frustrated. They're, they've been getting knocked a little bit over the past couple months. They've certainly come to this event firing all cylinders. But Bance, if there's someone that's going to hang with the slang here, it's Bance, Bance or Madcat. Those two have to have a big match. And you talked about the slow start specifically for Bance. Now that you're transitioning to Search and Destroy, for Splice in London, did you see something specifically that stood out for you in Search? Something they do really well. Uh, I mean, one thing that the, the Europeans as a whole do really well from the top teams, they stay active on the map. We saw it a little bit earlier on with Elevate, Splice, or a squad that do it uh, very well. Two, one thing I will say, they have some great duos in which they can put some pressure on these teams, right? With aggressive, with other players watching over. When you have Josh and Madcat watching over the aggressive plays from Jurd and Bance, it is a deadly combo on a map like Throwback. Here on Retaliation, though, it can cause some pacing issues for this team. When you send two players towards Top Hotel, the other ones might not get there in time. You need to be very well coordinated if you're a team like Splice. You cannot give Optic Gaming a chance to pick up your mistakes because they will capitalize on them. And it does look like we're just waiting for one more player to get selected here and we'll be able to hop into the search and destroy on Retaliation. I'm ready. As am I, man. This is uh, setting for a strong, strong series. Game one, not going the way for Splice, but we'll see if they can bounce back here, push this one the distance. You got to get it done in search, right? But as much as that was maybe the, uh, I guess the struggle last year, we could certainly say for Optic Gaming, I mean, COD Champs is abysmal when you're talking about search and destroy. They've looked a lot better this year, at least at least early on. Uh, Optic have always said that people underestimate their S&D gameplay, and you know what, at this point, I'll give it to them. As long as it stops making them angry, I'll give it to them. I, I, they're, they're a great team uh, in all game modes. At times, one begins to falter. They work on it. They get better at it. Ladies and gentlemen, you see it right there. It is MLG's prime time on day one. Optic Gaming up 1-0 to zero going into Search and Destroy against EU's finest in Splice. All right, well, here we go. It's going to be Josh using this e red off the break, trying to get pressure there at Patio. Jurd sees some pressure on the flank. Gets out of there wisely, able to play his life. He's getting hawked down. I believe that's Karma that was trying to chase him. <laughs> Lost track of him. <laughs> Look, he's just trying to get away in whatever way he can. Runs into a wall for a second, somehow still alive. And the amount of time he's bought for his team to begin to get some map pressure was beautiful, but in the end, all equates to his Optic Gaming actually getting a number advantage here. Mad Cat sneaking around this top patio area. Now, look at that, he's all by himself in a one versus three. Has he been spotted as of yet? Can't clean up the first one, and that might spell disaster. As time is ticking down, Optic Gaming will take round one. If he finds that first kill, may maybe a chance to clutch up, but he as you look at the time here, 10 seconds left, he wouldn't have had a lot to work with as a quick plant did go down in that first round, getting on the board there for Optic Gaming. Yeah, that was a great job by Jur to stay alive. Wanted to see maybe a little bit more help towards him to be able to punish the players that kept chasing him. But uh, they, they don't wind up setting anybody there. They try to get patio control. Doesn't wind up working out for them, though. They got the quick plant, which was okay. That's That was their goal, but they couldn't defend it after. So now Splice will be on the defensive side. We'll see what Optic Gaming can do, though, from their offensive pressure. And remember, the only map that I believe Optic has dropped right now is uplink to EG, correct? Yes. So they're, they're looking smooth so far in search and hard point. The pressure coming over top middle. Karma gets some hit markers there with the nade with the gun as well. Able to find the first blood as one drops, but Formal going to drop on the other side. He did see multiple players here. Looks like he wants to peek it. He's in the close edge. No shots yet. And there he's able to find him in the corner. Karma gun up. Nice shots. Gets the call from his teammate that there's one inside a better. He wants to challenge that as well. Good job playing his life. Yeah, and now he's, he knows he's got help from Crim6 now. On the other side, so the challenge should come in. There it is. One versus one, though. Karma versus Mad Cat. He's been seen. Karma should trace this one on down. Mad Cat is there, but Karma's got it. 
clutches the 1v1 to put OG up 2-0. to zero. For just a second, I thought that prone might have caught him there as the shots went a little bit over the head, but you see Karma here able to get the final bullet in and finish up the kill. I'm always surprised to see teams on retaliation defense send three players towards that arch. I don't care how many trophies you have. Optics send every grenade they have there off the start of offensive rounds, and they still try to punish them by getting a player in towards bike, and it just does not work. Optic are always ready for it with Karma that far pushed up. Slice will have to pick up on that and change things up as this game goes on. Well, speaking of changing it up, Jerk's gonna have a sniper across the hall, just misses and gets tagged up a bit in the process. Formal gonna find the first blood, trying to peek the corner again. And they're, they're just playing with him at this point. And they're a quick plan again. This time around, though, it will be another 3v2 advantage for Optic Gaming. Bants and Madcap the last two, now Bants by himself. Crim6 and Skump trying to chase him down. And they're starting to group up now for a second. I thought they were going to kind of send it one by one, which you never want to do. The van plus the nade. See you later, Ben. Optic van's back. <laughs> Maybe not the biggest moment, but yeah. it's back. <laughs> no, definitely not on the same scale moment as the original. <laughs> but hey, you know what? It works. Scump there puts Optic Gaming up three to zero. As even right there, you saw Scump was spotted in that lower street. He decides to throw a nade to give himself some cover as he's buying time for his teammate to go for the pinch in that bottom tunnel. The player could have tried to chase right after him in that bottom tunnel, but instead goes for the pinch on the other side. It's little things like that that keep Optic Gaming from throwing away 2v1 rounds in those scenarios. I, I thought they were going to chase, honestly. That's what I was about to start to say, but then they grouped up. Solid stuff there from Optic. Formal inside now, finding one inside a hallway, able to try to kill his Mad Cat. Found one onto Krem6. Now going to be a three versus three. One more drops, though, for Optic Gaming. Karma had the bomb in hand as well. You can see where that falls inside a hotel. I was looking at the minimap. He actually just caught a really weird timing where as he slid in, two players were sprinting right at him. I think they kind of bumped bodies and no one could get shots in. Thankfully for Splice, they do wind up finally giving themselves a number advantage. But can they close it out from here? Here's what I'm talking about, though. They stay active on the minimap. Mini map. Look at the two players just sprinting down that top bridge area. They'll go ahead and clean that one up. Nice job by Splice to get on the board. Splice getting the round win. They needed that desperately, and maybe that'll be enough momentum for them to start getting something going. Maybe. Here you'll see the final kill cam. It's Jared picking up a couple. He'll be able to work towards that FTL jump. But, uh, I mean, that's the first life we've seen in this, and they got pounded a bit in that game one. They've, they've got to bring it back. What do you think of FTL jump so far from what we've seen this weekend? Any major plays with it yet? That I've seen? No. Uh, but, again, I'll still keep going back to that silly play in the hardcore. We were watching that together. That was, that was insanity. If we see anything like that uh, on that scale here this weekend, we're lucky. It's such a flashy payload ability. Josh will read this beautifully. Karma gets called out, pushing towards that top hotel hallway. A very quick round. As kills are being traded left and right. And just like that, it's Crim6 by himself. We'll see if Crim6 has the ability to clutch this one versus two. You see an x-ray one at Patio, one rotating towards to get the bomb plan down. Oh, nicely done. And honestly, he probably wins that K-Bar on K-Bar. But the fact that Josh had that E-Rad, like that range, it is a melt machine. Yep. And look at how quick it cuts him down here. And this is the player that I mentioned who was so deadly with it at the CWL London event. And this is the exact scenario that comes to mind of when I first saw him bring it out, was on retali retaliation, s &D, towards Hotel Hallway, where he would just bounce around that top patio side and just shred people. We've mostly seen it used in search this weekend. Uh, Frost uplink, another popular one. It's yep. a lot of short to medium range gunfights. But here we go. Now back to Optic Gaming. You talked about the they shouldn't be stacking the stairs there. They they're don't not do it this time. Now they're going to stack the flank and pressure on Crim6. He's got to try and get away with his life. It looks like he can for now. And he's going to wrap back kind of the dock here. We'll see if he can find a kill. Maybe some sneaky plays behind the boxes as it looks on the minimap. Like they're going to continue to try and put pressure on the flank. Optic Gaming will keep. They're focused towards this patio side as it's so good to watch over the bomb. Kills being traded off the start. Bance with one of his own. Now Scump at Formal. The duo left by themselves. Leave that now down to Formal, which we've seen him. Oh. Well, I mean, it's a 1v3 to begin with, but uh, the shots there, a little suspect. And Jurd through the van. The headshot coming through. That'll be another round. Three in a row here for Splice as they're going to tie things up 3-3. Nice comeback to keep yourselves alive in this. Yep, and they've now got themselves a nice little FTL jump. What have we seen on defense? The change needed where they stop sending players into the multitude of grenades from Optic Gaming. And once they do that, it's almost like they give themselves a chance. Yeah, they certainly have. Bants there. Locked and loaded as we're getting ready to hop into round seven.
And now that we're going to have Optic on the defensive side, you, now let's see, can we maybe get over to Josh? I just want to see if Josh is going to play aggressively. No, okay, so he's not going to have E-Ride. So this is going to be a little bit of a change of pace here. He's been playing really around Patio. He's going to have the bomb in hand this time. A couple kills being traded out, and now he's going to look to make a play around the edge. But look at that. You see him prone, just watching this bike path. It's going to be a thing of timing. He saw him for just a second. Looks like he wants to chase the kill. I like the pre-fire around the edge, but unfortunately a little too quick. Now they're playing with him. Josh by himself. One versus two. Has one of the van, one top bedroom. This is not easy. Oh, oh, they almost line up for him. Oh. Right? Another van kill. <laughs> that was close. As nearly has both players in his sights. We'll see it again here as Formal gets the final three kills in that round to close it on out. They need to get away from these vans. They do. They definitely. Looks, uh, looks a bit lethal, but uh, they avoid what could have been a collateral situation in Optic Gaming. That's a big round, though. You know, you kind of let a little bit of a leak there. You let Splice get three in a row. Now you kind of retain control, and you get back to the offensive side of things. Now they're pushing into Hotel again this time, so they have mixed it up big time on defense like you were asking for. Yeah, they're going to keep doing this, and what Optic expect is potentially a pressure towards this top hallway side. You see there, the, uh, the trophy drone actually saving multiple players from spot, splice from that formal grenade. So it's a little things right there why that payload winds up getting used. And it's Crim6 this time around who's going to be waiting for any potential push from the guys on splice. I do like that. Look at Scump just fly up there. <laughs> I do like that position on the flank though. But now it opens things up for Crim to try and make a play. And Scump has now found two working on the ace. Madcat is able to find one, tag up another there with the end before the assist does come through. Scump's still alive. Let's see if he can close things out. But Madcat on the hunt here in Hotel. Scump with his third. Let's ace. see. Does Scump get the ace? As time continues to tick down, Vance by himself pushing on up towards the top side. Scump sees him. It's the ace. Oh, look at that smile. That's a good, that's a feel good round. When you're picking up all four, you know, you give up three rounds in a row to splice, you start to bounce back, take control. Nice positioning there in patio. And you, you called it out the first kill, a maniac just flying up, trying to apply pressure, and uh, he shuts the rest of it down, Jack. It was almost like he just got tired of waiting. He's like, you know what? <laughs> Let me just get up there and handle this. And then he did, he got four kills. Well, that's sometimes when we knock them four and eight. I, I, try that. I try that too. It just doesn't work as I, I, I go zero and eight. <laughs> Trust me, it's happened multiple times. As Splice, you almost clawed back into things, but now you're down 5-3 again, and uh-oh. Karma's got this payload out, but thankfully for Splice, they have been so far back on the map, it won't pay off for Optic. Not able to find anything there. Uh, Scump and Formal also have their payload abilities to work with as well. So you got a ton of utility here for Optic Game. You got a nice lead. You can't really blame him for trying to find a kill there. But uh, Jerk trying to get the sneaky route around the wall run. There's one back cathedral. Did he get spotted? Sure looks like it. Oh. FTL jumps through. Both payloads get used. Scump able to find it there as the reactive gets it done. If he didn't have it, that might have been a nice use of the FTL jump. Uh, oh, absolutely. It would have been, but... Thankfully, Reactive Armor saves Scump there, and that will get off the gaming first blood. Scump, five straight kills now in the last two rounds. As Splice again at a disadvantage, trying to make a round happen to mount this comeback. And look how, I mean, everybody's spread out at this point, but you just don't have that great of a trade position. Okay, now Josh and Vance group it up a bit, so you can try at least trade the kill. Josh finds one. Now going to be two versus three. Trying to wrap back and help. He's found it now another. He has Kel to work with. He sees him on bridge. Oh, he went low. Can he get behind him before this runs out? Surely a little bit awkward. He's able to do it. Now it's going to be Crim6. Josh, the one versus one. Josh trying to answer the scump base with an ace of his own. But Crim says, no, sir. Game two, Optic Gaming. What a reaction time from Crim there to close it on out. OG in the middle there got a little bit sloppy. But in the end, when it's six to three, and there's a look at the squad, cool, calm, and collected. Only one map dropped so far this weekend. As you mentioned, it was uplink, so if you're if you're a Splice fan, maybe there's something to look forward to there. But for the most part, Optic Gaming staying in full control. And I talked a little bit to Krim about that lost EG. Like, what kind of went wrong? He just said, I mean, he, he actually made it sound like it was just kind of an unlucky map. Like, the timing seemed off. They were holding, they were L-triggering more than we expected them to. Not one we should have thrown away. I mean, in his mind, they should be perfect throughout the weekend. And it's kind of hard to argue when you only have one loss. Yeah, and there, obviously, they win the series against EG. So the one map doesn't really matter too much in the grand scheme of things. Remember, though, in the past... We would have been saying, hey, if Optic win this, they automatically win the pool, but there is still the open bracket team that they've got to await tomorrow. Remember, there is three days of action here at the CWL Atlanta Open. Ton of open bracket matches oh, still yeah. going on tonight. Folks, do not go anywhere. When we come back, it's going to be game three uplink.
without question the biggest player on the planet. Now it's Scuff in the one versus two. Pleasure coming in from Rock. Gets one second player is there. Scuff gets both. The 3 0 sweep. He always does it. Knows there's a second player here. The nine step for Scuff oh. kills all three. When he is on point, Optic Gaming are a completely different team. The king has come to life. Scuff wipes out all of FaZe. Scuff beats Bearer, and there it is. Optic Gaming has done it. Scump is likely the most raw talented player in the game. He has that raw talent, that ability where he can go off and take over a game. If he has a good run here in Infinite Warfare, he could go down as the greatest Call of Duty player of all time. Scump is an extremely aggressive submachine gun player. The thing that makes Scump so special with his play is he plays at such a fast pace, but when you really break it down and watch what he does, he's always pre-aimed in, which is a little bit more of a slower player's tactic, but he's always able to just snap on players, pick up those fast kills, makes Scump's gameplay so crazy to watch. Scump has been one of the top Call of Duty players since he began his career, but it's no secret that the one thing he's missing is that elusive Call of Duty championship victory. The guy has basically won everything else. That is what his sights are on in Infinite Warfare. Can he do it? We'll have to find out. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Highlighting Scumpy, the king, the god. He's a very good player. Wow. Anything else you want to call? I, I don't know. I ran out of. I ran out of. Called him Seth. There. Seth. His first name. Sethy Poo. You know, we went to the same high school a decade apart. Wow. You're aging yourself. And God, did my hair look awful in that video? <laughs> it's gone now. Those Dude, strands. It's, it's so. Through. It's so nice and smooth. It's it just <clears throat> absolutely beautiful. I feel good. I feel good. But seriously, he is uh, one incredible player. And, you know, him kind of, I guess, bouncing back and away from Vegas the way he's been playing. If Optic Gaming is going to win this tournament, that, that is, I don't want to say the sole reason, but a huge part of why it's done. Obviously, he was a missing part. He was yeah. a missing part in Vegas. Now it looks like he is back. Optic Gaming currently sitting at an eight and one map count tonight, looking to finish it off with another 3-0 sweep this time against Splice. Splice, they're not out of it yet, but remember, they have a tough call ahead of them if they want to come back in this series. Thankfully for them, even if they do lose this series, they'll be set at 2-1 and one in their pool, still putting themselves in a great spot to potentially finish in the top two. Yeah, I, I guess I'd be completely shocked if these two aren't the two to come out in the top, right? To play in that championship bracket. But guys, it's Precinct, Uplink coming up next. Uh, this map has been hysterical for me over the course of today. I mean, you've either seen teams completely, I watched the match where like 20 points went on the board and every single point came when pushing, you know, towards gas, towards that mid street through ticket. And then I did another game where everything was scored through apartments. Like it can play kind of 50-50, it just depends on the team's play style. I will say Splice, they looked very good on this map at the CWL London event. They looked a step ahead of the rest of the European teams in Uplink. They were hitting their throws, they had their cuts watched and they knew how to push forward with the drone. Optic Gaming Splice, game number three now underway, and we're watching Scuff off the break. It is MLG prime time, and we'll see if Optic here is able to close it out. But I, I actually do like the, you mentioned that with regards to Splice and their uplink throws. That's because Jurd is basically the Steve Nash of uplink. He never misses those shots. Steve Nash never missed free throws. Yeah. That's the guy that popped into my head. I don't know why. It's fine. You can bring that up. I'll miss the reference time and time again. Optic, <laughs> another thing that's been missed is two throws already by OG as they missed twice on that first push. Well, still at a lock here. You'll see Drone is going to be the Mad Cat. They're trying to set up to make the play towards Ticket, but Optic, you can see, kind of stacked oh. in their back alley, stacked there towards Ticket to make sure they can't get anything going, because that's where the rally will begin from. Uh, one pushing there to mid tarps, able to win that gunfight. And there, Vance still alive in a 1v1. Does win it against Crimson. So now Splice, he should just push right past this Drone. There it is, Vance. Starting to heat up. He's already 6 and 2 in this game after just the first minute. There's the four times multi kill call out. And when I talk about teams not missing, we've already had three in 80 seconds. Interesting. They, have to, they just have to make me look stupid. <laughs> All right. Well, now let's see That's where easy. control goes. Yes, it is. Control will go to Karma. He's got the drone. They're trying to wrap kind of down through gas, mid street to Cherry Blossom, see if they can maybe make a play that way. One was in behind. I think that was Mad Cat maybe trying to flank pressure through, but not able to find it. It's still going to be Optic this Gaming's control, and this will easily be a dunk, as you can see them spawning them out top side of the map. Yep, this is a dunk for Optic Gaming. They'll be the first ones on the board. As now Scump, who's the only player rotating to mid-lobby, wins two gun engagements to at least stop the potential pressure that could have oh, come in place for the moment. And Vance winning those two gunfights, though, makes That's it safe. at least so, yes, I guess. If, if he loses that, the rally then continues for Optic, right? This is a dunk. 
right. even with him winning both those gunfights, like what what goes wrong? I guess he's the only man, right? He wins that, but uh, everyone else ends up dropping. Split spawns, so you have one player spawning at back park and then one coming from that cherry blossom area. Once Optic just kill one more, they already have a lead blocker pushed up, forcing the spawns again out to the side of Splice. That's all it's been so far for Optic Gaming. Two dunks yeah. have come in by forcing the spawns at either that top statue side or by this bottom cherry blossom area. It's why they're up four to zero at the moment. Well, Bans need a little bit of help kind of at, in that one-on-one -on -one gunfight there that you saw in lobby. He needs help with the game, really. He's 10 and six right now. Nobody getting it done. You've got what, Madcat two and seven, Josh two and eight, combined for four and 15. That's not gonna get it done against the likes of Optic Gaming. Yeah. And again, look, all right, now, now kills going in OG's favor. They're getting in the middle map. Somehow, Jurt is still alive. Finally, does get taken on out. Challenges coming in from formal. He's just been lights out today, Maven. Yeah, I mean, statistically, if you looked at it, we brought up the numbers a little bit earlier, but formal has been insane, really, in every single game mode from a KDE standpoint, even getting it done to the objective a bit, which isn't usually his forte. And, and look again, uh, Crim6 does die there, but they have the idea in Optic Gaming to push up past the Splice team, catch them off guard. Nice interception there by Josh to at least keep this one a two possession game with two minutes remaining inside one. Well, you'll take a look. You see the number four on the minimap is going to be formal set up inside of lobby. So he's at least there to try and make plays. As Crim6 finds the kill, things are opening up. There's only one wrapping back. It's going to be Jordan trying to play a little bit of defense. He's able to cut down one from behind, but as Skump trades it out, this should be another dunk on the board momentarily here for Optic Gaming. Six to zero. And how much time have they spent spawning up at the top side of the map here for Splice? It's got to be frustrating. It's because the kills for Optic are coming in with a lead blocker. They're trusting their player near the drone to be able to handle the situation by themselves. And then they're pushing out the lane earlier than any other team. Here's an example of it again. Crim6 and Karma wind up pushing past everybody, or Crim6 and Skump that time push past everybody else. They look for these first engagement wins. Karma and Crim won one of their own. If they kill this last player, that's another dunk for Optic Gaming now, as it will be 8-0 to zero, running away with this game one. 60 seconds left, and it has been nothing but the green wall here. As they're looking to tack on maybe more points here over the closing 50 seconds or so. It's going to be Scump inside a lobby. He's got two engagements, able to win. No, not win the first one. It's actually Mad Cat getting the better of him. Would it be, a, I don't know, would it be huge at least to get one point on the this board here? Oh, okay, so you're going to get two. You get a four, the pass to Jurd, and there goes through the dunk. So that's got to be at least a nice way to hey, close out the there, final There's going to be seconds. more here. There could be more right here. Mad Cat needs to win this 1v1. He gets it. Now Splice. Look, to begin to mount a comeback. It's all on Jurd. It, it should be close to another dunk, but it might be more reasonable just go for the one-point throw at this point. Does he wind up getting it in the end? Vance goes for the toss. There it is, eight to three. They'll bring it back a little bit towards the end, but still Optic Gaming will go into the half five minutes away from a 3-0 sleep to close it. Uh, sweep, not sleep. That's what we're going to do after this. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. But, but that, that's got to that's feel good for Splice, though, and a bit frustrating for Optic. You, know, you basically play, what, four perfect minutes of uplink? You let those final 60 seconds or so slip. Maybe that gives Splice a little bit of life now as yep. we switch sides. Man, that, that that is the side too where for a lot of teams, they'd rather be scoring on the side that Splice for in that side one. I have seen Optic Gaming force players into that back spawn trap near that gas alley and then just continue to run the drone on in. What can Splice do? They need more kills around the objective and in Optic's base if they want any chance to come back in this I game. I mean, I, I would take any kind of kills right now. <laughs> just with the way it looks, you've got what, a couple oh, players around double negative and you open three dead up already. three kills, one team kill coming in for Optic, but it's likely not going to matter as they've at least got drone control. Probably no points coming on the board unless, well, never mind. That's going to be the drone carrier dropping. That should be the end of it. Let's formal finds all three. Can't get it done there, so Splice will get a little bit of control, but uh, still a very scary opening 30 seconds. Oh, I mean, you've got all four players on Splice negative. The fact that they're even keeping it, this game as close just as a, te a testament to their team, what do they do? They're trying to push out multiple lanes right now, try to see wherever Optic Gaming could be pressuring from, and they're going to go ahead and use a Scarab, and he should spot the, uh, the Scarab of the opponent as they'll go flying right past each other. Optic, though, continue to put pressure on Park, and now Vance is realizing that he'll move it towards teammate who's now in this back restaurant area. This could be a dunk opportunity if they're able to kill off Formal right here. It should be. Surely able to find the kill. 85. Forward there, you get the dunk through. I love it. They're climbing back in this, looking to extend this best of five as we're looking at the end of the night. Splice still alive. And look at how long it took Splice to make that decision. I love it. They didn't give up on the push, but they made sure not to get be over eager. They waited until they had the right knowledge. They knew where all four players were, and they said, hey, if we win one 1v1 gunfight on their portal, we should have a dunk. That'll bring them now back with in three. So what was it, uh, what, eight to zero lead? Now eight to five, five unanswered points.
I watched a game with a big lead that got went away just a couple weeks ago, actually, on television, a Super Bowl game. Yeah, that was pretty big, too. I'm seeing some reminiscent here. <laughs> well, let's see if they can actually get it done. This is an opportunity for Jordan Co. to maybe get a one-pointer on the board, but now the defense there for Optic, all four down for Splice. Not necessarily a counter opportunity, but certainly an opportunity for map control. As you see the number two on the mini map, that was Krim push up mid street. He falls. I believe it's Skump trying to follow him up, but it's going to be Splice looking to hold this down. You've got three minutes to work with. Yep. Drone still flirting with the base here of Optic Gaming as they're just looking to slowly build out of the base. And now Optic will just let the drone down for a second and try to hold from his statue side. It's probably the number one stalemate area of this map. Oh, yeah. As now Mad Cat Cruz, the time is against him, so every second that goes by favors Optic Gaming. And this is why you play a stalemate towards that side. You get a couple kills, now you can move up with this drone right away if you're OG. They're trying to move it up. I mean, the one positive for Splice through the first uh, two and a half minutes of the second side, they haven't given up that spawn trap, right? They haven't let Optic get in control and just kind of destroy them in that back alley. Formal, they're trying to get behind. Gets obliterated as Jared wraps around the corner. That's not going to open things up for Skump to push through Ticket. Now, we saw Karma do the same thing with the drone earlier. He just moved it towards his base. Does Skump do the same thing? It does look like he'll at least try to get towards a lead blocker. With two minutes remaining. FCL jump now used. Oh, my goodness. He's basically inside Skump there. Formal with the help to at least stop that pressure for the moment. And just like that, the drone being pushed up by Bants. Should go for the one here. This is that tough one I was talking about. Does connect back within one possession. Nice shot. Bants, hey, he had way more time than he realized. I was looking at the green arrows there. Yep. They were kind of rotating towards the top of the map. Bants had it wide open. But he does get the top one-point shot through over the top. And that's now going to be three kills for Optic Gaming. Drone's still going to be sitting mid in lobby. You have 90 seconds to work with if you're spliced. There's still plenty of time here. You have to be patient. Bance finds two before he ultimately ends up dropping. But each one of these, just one after the one after another here inside a lobby, who's going to get the eventual break? Splice, they have time to work with. They need to wait for the right scenario. They cannot get over eager like we saw earlier on. They made the right decision. They need to keep that up now, even with time ticking. 70 seconds remaining in this game. Optic Gaming still in charge of the kills. The big thing for me, four payloads about to be earned for Optic. Formal gets his. Scuff and Karma are both one kill away. And Krim is about the same distance, too. This could be a disaster for Splice if those come into play for OG. And this has been, I mean, at least a good good job of keep away kind of for Optic. They, they've had kind of control of the drone, control mid-map. They haven't put points on the board, but they've done a good job holding off Splice. And now as Formal gets the Saturian out, that's going to make it very difficult to push construction here. Hello, as he comes around the corner, gets tagged. One more trying to run away. That would be the fourth and final player there in Bants. But he is able to at least stay alive. But now the attack is coming for the green walls. They're looking to push ticket and bury the side of Splice. This is what I was talking about, those payloads coming into place. Centurion used to block one lane with the likes of Formal. Now you've got Karma ready with Camo. Splice, so they have one final push. Here it comes. Karma, the one line of defense here. Does he pop his Camo? It does appear so. He's going to get crafty with this one. Seeks past multiple. One kill. Can't get the second. Crimson's now alive, though. It's a 2v2. Ten seconds left. Josh with the 1v1 against Formal. Can't get the kill as of yet. Can he get there in time? The dunk? No. Not going to happen. Optic Gaming gets way closer than they would have wanted in the end. And they'll take the 3-0 sweep over the Europeans. Uh, it's like you see the big man in basketball. <laughs> Defense at the rim. They shut it down there as Josh tries to get through. And Optic almost perfect today. They drop one map. But damn, they look good. If there's anything they need to improve upon, I can tell you right now it's uplink. They lose the uplink to EG. They're way closer at the end with a final score of 8-6. to six. But at the end of the day, three of North America's best teams Phase, Luminosity, Optic, all 3-0, and Envy pushing for a 3-0 day of their own. Yeah, I mean, your four Titans that you kind of expect to be maybe Luminosity, not in the Titan ballpark, but we did expect them to be great coming into the game. They're looking so, so strong.